Hey class, welcome. Today's uh, the first video I'm going to record for Algebra 1. We're starting Chapter 8, Section 8-2. Uh, for today's activities, you're going to download this PDF that you're going to see here in front of you. Uh, complete the notes. There's about five or six problems there. After doing that, there's going to be another activity, which uh, I will also post in my MA. You're going to download this and complete. And then finally, at the end, there's some textbook problems which is right here, and again, that we posted in my May. So let's start first with uh, some of the notes right here. We'll go through this together. So we're gonna look at graphing this linear equation. So we have x plus y equals zero. So to start off, how we could do this is make uh, a chart right here. And for the chart, let's make this the x values and this the y values. To graph it, all you need is three points or three ordered pairs. For x, you can pick any values you want. I would typically start with 0, 1, and 2. It's the smallest ones, and it's going to be the easiest to calculate. So for this equation, if we plug in 0 for x, what is y going to equal? In other words, 0 plus y equals 0. y would have to also be 0. If we plug in y for x, 1 plus y equals 0. y would equal negative 1. And then if we plugged in 2 for x, y would equal negative 2. And then again, to graph this, starting with x and y, we have an ordered pair. So the first ordered pair is 0, 0, 1, negative 1, and 2, negative 2. So 0, 0 is right here. It's the origin. 1, negative 1 is right here. And 2, negative 2 down here. Make sure to connect these put arrows at the end because it shows that it's a line that goes on forever in both of those directions. Okay, let's try the next problem here. We have 2x, 2x plus y equals 10. Again, let's make a chart here. We have x and y values. You can plug in any numbers you want. Let's say if we plug in again 0, 1, and 2, 0, 1, and 2. All right, at this point, you should pause the video and try to solve this on your own. Try to fill out the chart, and then we'll go over it after we do that. All right, hopefully you paused it and tried it there on your own. Let's go through this together. So the first part, if we plug in 0 for x, we have y equals 10. Okay, if we plug in 1 for x, we have 2 plus y equals 10, or y equals 8. And if we plug in 2 for x, we have 4 plus y equals 10 or y equals six. And again, each of these is an ordered pair. Zero, 10 is one ordered pair. You would plot that on the graph. One, eight is another ordered pair, and then two, six, and then connect the dots and make a line. All right, one more thing to mention, you're gonna see it today um, in the activity, and also it's in the textbook a little bit. Talk, it talks about the x and the y intercept. So, For x-intercept, for the x-intercept, the y value is always going to equal 0. And think about it like this. Here's the graph. We're saying the x-intercept. So here's the x-axis. Where does this point intercept the x-axis? So let's say if I put a dot right here. This is going through the x-axis, right? What about if I put a dot, let's say, over here? Is that also on the x-axis? What about here or there? Okay, as you can see, all these points, what's the y value in this one? Well, it's zero. What's the y value in this one? It's zero, and so forth. So one thing that can be confusing is sometimes students think of uh, x-intercept, and they think that x is going to be zero but it's always gonna be the opposite. So y is gonna be zero. Just like if I said, what's the y-intercept? Well, y-intercept, x is always zero. Again, another example, if we think of, here's the graph, where's it gonna intercept uh, the y-axis? Well, again, here's the y-axis, the vertical one. If we put a dot right here on the y-axis, what is x? we made an ordered pair out of this, right? And we said, 
This one's what, about one, two, three, about negative four for y. What's the x value in this? Did we go left or right? No, we just went straight down, so it's zero. What if I put it up here? Right, that's gonna be uh, the y axis here intercepts it. What's the x value? Again, it's gonna be zero. So another way to solve these is to just set x equal to zero and solve for y, and then set y equal to zero and solve for x, and that'll give you the x and the y axis, or um, intercept, sorry. Next, graphing this, x equals negative four. For this one, let's just pick ordered pairs. And no matter what you pick for y, x is always gonna be negative four. Okay, so you could pick one for y, you could pick five for y, you could pick 500 for y if you want to. All right, no matter what you pick, x is always gonna be negative four. Okay, so let's graph these, negative four, is about right here, one, two, three, four, and then one is right here, negative four, five is somewhere over here, and negative four, 500 would be all the way up here, okay? If you notice, whenever you have x equals a number, it's gonna be a vertical line. Okay, this represents x equals negative four. Okay, even though we think of x as horizontal line, we're saying that the value is always negative four, so it doesn't matter what y is. Y could be negative 10, y could be negative 20, y could be positive three, positive eight. X will always be negative four, and therefore it's gonna give you that vertical line. Okay, just like with y, if y is one, we'll put ordered pairs together. No matter what x is, y is always gonna be one. We could call x2, we could call x4, we could call x8, okay? Go over two spots, y is one. Go over uh, four spots, y is one. Go over eight, y is one, okay? You could also make x negative, maybe negative four, y is still gonna be one. Negative 12, negative 20, 30, 50. When you have y equals a number, it's gonna be a horizontal line at that number, so in this case, the number one, go up one spot, horizontal line. Okay, uh, problems like these, again, let's make the X and the Y chart. We'll plug in values and then graph it on the, uh, on the chart over there. To start off though, let's make it a little bit easier on ourselves. We have a fraction here. We could multiply both sides of the equation by three. All right, doing so cancels out these threes and then you get 18. So you have x plus y equals 18. All right, for this one, I want you to fill out on your own, just like before, plug in values for x and then solve for y. If you happen to ever get a fraction for y, pick a different value for x. Okay, we always want integers. We want whole numbers so we can plot it nicely on the graph. All right, after doing that, I then want you to download and complete this sheet. It's also in my MA. It talks more about X and Y intercepts. It gives you uh, definitions. It gives you examples here. It has uh, different pictures for you to look at. And then down here, practice problems. There is, I believe, nine of these. For each of these, I want you to make a chart, fill in points. When you make the chart, always have at least three points. Uh, for today, I'm going to require you have four. So the first points, or actually, let me say that again, have five points. The first two points are gonna be the X and the Y intercept, and then the other three can be any number that you choose. If you wanna choose one, two, three for X, that's fine. If you wanna use larger numbers, that's also okay. So for each of these, make a chart, find the X and the Y intercepts, plug in other values for X, solve for Y, and then graph it um, on a coordinate plane. And for that, I believe uh, in notability, you can just um, go to the, to the menu at the top and insert a blank coordinate plane and then add it on there. Again, there's nine of these, please complete that. Once you're done with that, there is some textbook work. Um, it's right here, page 357 and page 358. Okay, and that's gonna wrap up today's lesson. Uh, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate, reach out to me, uh, send me an email and I'll get right back to you. All right, have a good day and I'll talk to you next time.